Welcome to another episode of the Specialty Collective, where we bring in top specialists from all fields of medicine in the United States. On this episode of the Specialty Collective, we have a very special treat. We're gonna be talking about penises with Dr. Jake Taylor, NYU urologist. Let me ask you, what really makes a good doctor? If you're not happy, how are you supposed to help your patients? Hey everybody, thanks for having me, Jay. Uh, it's a really kind intro for me. I really need transparency here because I'm working towards being one of the United States' best urologists, but right now I'm still in residency, so working every day to do that, um, but that's very kind of you. Happy to be here, happy to share a little bit about what a urology resident does every day. He's a little too humble. Uh, Jake, <laughs> Dr. Jake is in his second year at NYU as a urology resident. Yep. One of the best guys I know, he always tells me about his super fun urology cases. There's really like, doctors love to talk about their weird fun cases. This guy's got the best ones I've ever heard. <laughs> maybe if we're lucky enough, he'll share one with us at the end of this video. Yep, so if you watch maybe. through the end of this video, you might hear some, uh, some fun stuff, but yeah. let's get right into it. The right. audience wants to hear about urology, which is one of the most sought after, one of the most competitive yeah. Yeah. fields that there is. So I'm sure everyone's pretty interested in hearing about it. Uh, I'm gonna start very broad, very umbrella. Tell us about urology. Sure, that's the best question to start with. Urology, most people really don't know it, exactly what it is. Uh, urology essentially is the male and female urinary system, as well as the male reproductive system. So anything to do with kidneys, bladder, prostate, the ureters that connect the kidneys to the bladder, um, as well as anything going on with the male genitalia, is us. Conditions like kidney stones, conditions like um, any sort of urologic cancer, so kidney cancers, bladder cancers, pretty commonly prostate cancer, um, all that is dealt with by us, as well as male sexual function, uh, male reproductive function, which uh, for a large percent of, of couples is not just females, but is also males. That is dealt with by, uh, by urologists. Very cool, exciting. And I just want to apologize in advance to everyone who's watching this yeah. video. You're probably hearing the sirens going off in the background, the ambulances. We're actually right, I live right outside of, outside of NYU. So you're probably hearing a lot of ambulances and sirens. It's New York, sorry about that. But let's move on to the next question. How many years of training does it take to become a urologist? Sure. Um, so to become a urologist, it's a surgical field. So all surgical fields are five years of training. So you start with one year of internship and then four years of dedicated sur surgical training. That's the same uh, in urology. So standard is five years. Sometimes you have six years with an extra year of research. If you want to subspecialize, you can subspecialize for another two years going into fellowship and uh, I know we'll get into a little bit more in that later, um, but that can be an additional two years of training on top of medical school, so anywhere between five, seven, eight years or so. Okay, and that's pretty standard for Yeah, it's a pretty short amount of time, residency. but yeah, pretty standard for a, a surgical residency. All right, very cool. Tell me, why did you decide urology? What, sure. what, were, what were your options and why did you lean toward urology? Absolutely, even before medical school, but getting into medical school, I knew I wanted to do two things. Uh, one of those things was surgery, and the other thing was working with cancer patients. Um, from a surgical perspective, I really enjoy doing things with my hands. I'm a very technically minded person. Um, I like building things, creating things, thinking about how to use my hands technically to fix problems. So I was always drawn to surgery. And the second reason was working with cancer patients. I think there's something unique about working with patients who are receiving that, that diagnosis. I think that's a really unique thing in medicine, and that's something I want to be involved with. And so when I was in medical school, I was trying to figure out how to get there. And within the, uh, within the surgical cancers, um, that's uro urologic cancers were really what interested me, interested me most. So kidney cancers, bladder cancers, prostate cancer, um, that's what really drew me to the field. Very cool. And just for the people who might be curious, yeah. Is urology uh, a majority of cancer cases or can you kind of choose where you want to subspecialize there? Yeah, um, so urologic cancers are a, a big part of urology. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that being said, there are many different big parts of urology. So a big part of urology that's been growing in the past 10 or 15 years or so has been um, uh, female urology. Mm -hmm. So looking at uh, different urinary uh, symptoms like incontinence, urinary frequency, overactive bladder. That's a whole field of what falls under the umbrella of female urology. Um, so that's one uh, section. And then you also have uh, sexual medicine, which is more um, 
male sexual fu function, male sexual health. And then you also have endourology, which is kidney stones. Kidney stones are huge, unfortunately, in the US. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of urology as well. Um, there's a couple other smaller, uh, smaller fields, and uh, I must not forget uh, reconstructive urology. That's a huge growing field today. Right now, boom. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, those are just a couple different subsets of urology. And urologic cancers, I would say, is uh, pretty big up there, but each of their own have their own real piece of the pie. Yeah, so you just yeah. killed it. You went right into my next question, which yeah. is what are some great subspecialties of urology? Yeah. I think we just touched on some of the major ones. Yeah. If there's any you want to throw out there that are a little bit more obscure, uh, any anything that people might want to know, or was that, that the, the bulk of urology? Yeah, I mean, I would say that's probably the bulk of urology. Um, you also have general urology, so um, uh, how people urinate is a big part of urology, and that's what a lot of general urologists do. Um, you don't necessarily need advanced training for that. So that's a big part, but what we just touched on as well in a big growing field is transgender surgery, transgender medicine, and urologists as well as plastic surgeons as well as endocrinologists are really a big part of that uh, growing discussion in today's, uh, today's medicine. So a question that just popped in my head, because mm -hmm. you said that urologists mm -hmm. work with male reproductive anatomy, yeah. but not female reproductive mm -hmm. anatomy. And sex change operations, et cetera, are something that you guys focus on now and a subspecialty. Yeah. Do you guys also reconstruct female anatomy? Uh, in the transgender sense? Yes. Yes. Uh, so you can go from male to female anatomy and female to male anatomy. And urologists and, are and heavily involved. And urologists are heavily involved in both. That's so yeah. exciting. Yeah. It's okay. pretty cool. So taking a little bit more fun, that mm -hmm. was the, the nitty gritty. Absolutely. What is a typical day like in your life? I know you're a resident. So yeah. give us a little rundown of what it's like as a resident and then also as an attending, what, what that you see, what you observe, what is that like? Sure. So I'd say there are some similarities between resident life and attending life. I see my attendings work extremely hard. Um, they do a lot of research, they have a lot of clinical responsibilities. So I would say that my life will probably be somewhat similar uh, when I'm attending to what it is now, but hopefully a little bit less hours. Um, as a resident, I'm getting up very early, going to the hospital, rounding on patients, um, and when, I'm, when I have a surgical day, I'll be in the operating room for 8, 10, 15, sometimes more uh, hours a day, um, doing many different kinds of procedures, kidney stone procedures, um, some of those transgender procedures, or some of those urologic cancer procedures. So I'll be in the operating room for a long, long portion of the day. And then on other days, I'll be in the clinic seeing patients. One of the great things about urology, the marriage between surgery and medicine. Uh, it's a big field where we can treat stone patients or some urinary symptom, urinary frequency, overactive bladder patients with medicines instead of immediately surgery. So we spend a lot of time in clinic seeing those patients and if sometimes the medicine doesn't work, then we always have those surgical options. Very cool, that was a, that was a great answer. So now a big hot topic for this series is how do you get in? So what I wanna ask you is how competitive is urology and what are the board scores that people should be looking to getting if they want to be competitive for matching in a urological residency? Yeah, absolutely. So it's plain and simple. Urology is a hard mm -hmm. field. Uh, it's a hard field to get into. It's very competitive. It's right up there with you know, the classic difficult fields to get into, plastic surgery, orthopedic surgery. So you need a, a high board score. I would usually say a threshold of 240 on the USMLEs is is a threshold where you can get yourself in the door. Yeah, probably at least. Um, I wouldn't say though that people with 230s and 235s never get in. Yeah. It just might be a little bit more difficult. Obviously the higher the better, but boards aren't everything. I always tell uh, medical students and pre-med students all the time, if you want to do something and you put your mind to it, a score is just a score. And you can create the rest of your application to make you competitive to get into that field. Definitely. Are urological residencies looking for uh, prior research and you're doing medical school? Yeah, I would say yes. Uh, urology is a very heavy, uh, heavy research field. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be in urology. It needs to show that you're, you're committed to research in some sense, committed to advancing the field of medicine, um, or it could be something a little different like health policy or business or something like that that still has an effect on medicine, um, but isn't directly urology. Uh, but yeah, research is definitely important um, in medical school, starting early, finding a mentor early, uh, finding some projects that are just interesting to you and, and getting something done. 
Awesome. Yeah. And now the golden question, because everyone always talks about, yeah. you know, lifestyle, mm -hmm. salary. Mm -hmm. How do urologists do financially? Sure. Financially, I'm not quite there yet. No, you're a um, resident. <laughs> <laughs> still a resident. Um, but we tend to do pretty well from what, I, what I've read and what I've heard. It depends on whether you're an academic or private practice. Private practice, you can tend to make a little bit more. Um, your hours are probably a little bit better. But I would say the average salary is probably in the range of 350000 um, That's a guess, though. I don't know for sure. I'm checking right now. What does it say? Let's see, 2017, it is the fourth highest paying specialty with a national average of $400,000 a year. Pretty close. On salary, that's pretty good. Pretty close. Yeah, pretty this close. is stuff that people want to know. Uh, on top of that, we've got cardiology at 410, plastic surgery at 440, and orthopedics at 489. Mm -hmm. Just your information, but urology right up there with the, yeah. the other ones. Awesome. Absolutely. Good stuff. All right, so running right, right on down mm -hmm. this list. You ever been sued? Probably not. You're still in residency. You're Correct. still covered. Correct. Your attendings. Is, is urology a field that's really subject to lawsuits? It's hard to say. I only have limited experience. Um, I have attendings who I know who have been sued. I also have attendings that I know who have been working for 30, 40 years and have never been sued. Yeah. So I think it really goes back to the age old fact of if you're nice to patients, honest to patients, compassionate, empathetic, and, and and really just a real person to them, Yeah. Um, it's very unlikely or less likely that you'll be sued. Things come up, things happen, but if you're honest about those mistakes, usually most of the time people are pretty understanding. Yeah, you know the saying about the two types of doctors? Yeah, what is it? The doctor that's been sued mm -hmm. and the doctor that's about to be sued. Mm -hmm. yeah. so apparently it happens to everybody, but yeah. this is a... Uh... Eventually it'll happen, but uh, I wouldn't say Urology is necessarily more prone to that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, good stuff. If you could go back to your third, fourth year at medical school, yeah. uh, is there any other field that you would choose other than urology? I would uh, probably say ask me in five or ten years. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but probably not. Uh, like I said before, the the reason I went into this uh, field is because of um, the great combination of wide range of surgeries that are available to urologists. Um, as well as the diversity of urologic cancers, uh, which is ultimately my goal, is to become a urologic oncologist. Um, and I'm pretty excited about you know, pursuing that goal, uh, but we'll, we'll see. I, I don't think I would change. Um, I'm pretty excited about you know, what my future holds in that respect. That's awesome. So now I'm gonna force you to pick another specialty. Okay. <laughs> You're back in fourth year and urology's off the table. Mm -hmm. What is your next choice? Um, other things I was thinking about, but didn't do. Uh, cardiothoracic surgery. Sure. Open heart surgery is one of the most magical things ever. Seen it once and I was like, wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Funny believe it or not, I also really enjoyed psychiatry. I did too. Um, it's actually funny, one of my psychiatry uh, um, attendings when I was on rotation said, yeah, I actually heard of some urologists who are choosing between psych and urology. And it's a very funny thing to choose between. Maybe there's some personality crossover that's interesting. Maybe. I can see in another life me, me doing uh, psychiatry. You can see that too. <laughs> okay, very cool. This is my fun question. Mm -hmm. What is the stereotype for urologists? Sure. You know, I don't like to stereotype people too much, but uh, if I must, uh, I would say somebody that's laid back. Okay. Somebody that's, you know, easygoing, but definitely hardworking, definitely able to put up with the penis jokes and uh, have some fun and some laughter around, you know, their work. Um, but somebody who's incredibly smart. I mean, we do some very complicated things. A lot of people don't necessarily realize that urologists are surgeons. Yeah. Um, and are very uh, operative heavy surgeons. So we're doing, you know, in my residency, we're doing 100 surgeries a week, if not more. Um, so uh, uh, somebody who works hard, somebody who has fun, and really is committed to giving back to their patients for sure. You mentioned penis jokes. Mm -hmm. let's, let's take a step back. I don't have one, jokes. I don't have one. But is that true? Do you guys, are you guys in there, do you guys tell penis jokes? You know what? Or do you just Not hear really. them? Not really. We just hear them. I bet. At, pe people are just like, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Penis. Haha. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It's another organ. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Okay. I led to it at the beginning, mm -hmm. but is there any sweet case that you'd like to share with the audience? There are a lot of interesting cases. Uh, 
Uh, you always have your penis factors, which are funny and interesting, and people don't even realize that that's a thing. I didn't realize that was a thing yeah, until you so told if you me. So if you want the penis joke, you can actually break your penis, so be careful out there, guys. Um, not only use protection, but be careful. Uh, trauma, um, uh, certain uh, traumas to the kidney are very interesting, where you can get in car accidents and shatter the kidney. Usually we actually don't operate on those patients, but that's always an interesting case. We're gonna do a follow-up video right after this about penis fractures, and I am pumped. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> so you guys are gonna have to tune into that. Okay, I think that wraps up our segment on urology. Again, this is Dr. Jake Taylor. Thanks for having me. Follow him on Instagram, at doctor, all spelled out, dot Jake. Uh, really cool dude, posts a lot of urology stuff. He's handsome. You should follow him. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thank Dr. you everybody for tuning here. in. And if you're interested in urology, shoot the, blow up this guy's DMs, he loves it. Any questions, happy to answer for you. I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Specialty Collective. Thank you. See you later.